This is Doma Bland. I'm going to make all attempts. This is Velma Bland. I'm going to make all attempts to commentate from the book of Joel. The book of Joel speaks about the plague of incense. The plague of incense, a type of the day of the Lord, a day of the Lord, invaders from the north. The Lord responses, responds in promise of deliverance. The signs proceed in the day of the Lord, the restoration of Israel, and full kingdom blessing. So I'm going to make sure the volume's up. Um, see if I can interpret because I, um, before I come on and before I videotape a caption of what I'm lecturing from the Bible or commentating from, I um. I don't read it. I just, I just get in it, dig in it, and get to talking. And that's how I have recorded all of the videos that you will find on YouTube under um, Marie Bland. I have it, Marie Bland, because someone hacked my YouTube that I had under Velma Bifi. Velma B5, V E L M A B I F Y. Someone hacked my YouTube and I couldn't get it back. So I canceled that out. And then I, I had V Bland Tutoring. Someone messed with that. So now I had to take my middle name and flip it, Muriel to Marie Bland. And that's where you will find my YouTube. If you want to subscribe, go in and subscribe. There are a few age restricted videos because I don't want any children to go in these videos because I'm speaking about some things that you know may be a little bit too much for them to understand and we don't want to dissuade anyone's beliefs away from the way how they were raised we don't want their parents to get upset with me when you're not putting any type of protection on your computer systems for your children not to visit particular websites. That might have language that these kids should hear right now, that only you should teach them. So we're going to start with the book of Joel, the plague of insects, the word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Okay, so the son of Peth Pethuel. Now, I never heard of Pethuel. So we're going to try to find him. Okay. Israel and the na nations in the day of the Lord. Joel, Israel, the day of the Lord. Let's see, can I get this up? The son of Pethuel, Pethuel, Joel and Judah. You see that? And it speaks about the insects. So I'll get to that in a moment. Judgment of God, no judgment by God, is the day of the Lord. Israel and the nations in the day of the Lord, Joel. Deliverance by God, objects of judgment, instruments of judgment, and so it is um, the nation, nations. So, um... Showing... A lot of insects. All right, so Pethel, the son of Pethel, Joel, the son of 
Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? So the question is, have you ever known such a thing to happen before in the current day or any time in the past or current day? Days of your father. Did your father or did your grandfather ever speak to you about any such thing happening before? Tell ye your children of it. And this is something that most grand parents are doing is they are telling their children stories about their past childhood livelihood or speaking to them about things that they've experienced and they want the kids to know that they had had something in their past before and it affected them or it was something great and let them know that they're not perfect. They had something as well happen to them. Tell you your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. So this is something that people um, usually are saying. I forgot to put my symbolic birthstone on because I have people trying to steal my videos. So let me put on my symbolic birthstone and be right with you. What I have here is my I've had this for quite a long time. I had it for since 1980s. It's a musical box and it's from China. It looks like a China. It's very old. It can use a good wax. Okay, so we're going to put on my symbolic birthstone, sapphire, because we have someone out here trying to steal my identity and my videos as theirs, because they can't think for themselves. All right. As the scripture reads, hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. So whatever the palmer worm left behind, the locust hath eaten and that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eaten and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten so what that mean is do not think that what you left behind that is unworthy because someone or somebody or something would be very glad to have what you thrown away or what you have lost. There is somebody is always 
will be right there with their hands out to accept whatever it is that you no longer want. Whether it is an old dress you throw in the garbage or whether or not it's a love you lost or a love that you gave away or that you didn't want anyway anymore. Whether it is your garbage that you threw out in the trash can that you thought that you were throwing out your garbage, but someone is going through it to find what valuables that you probably did not see as valuable. But to them, any old thing is val valuable to them. Even a little drink of juice that you probably left in a carton and threw in the trash can. So a canker worm will, will be eaten by a caterpillar. And a caterpillar always turns out to be a butterfly. So if you see a butterfly, <laughs> the butterfly consists of all these things. A palmer worm, bits and pieces of locusts, a canker worm, and a caterpillar is now a butterfly. And then speak about a butterfly. But what it's saying here is, is the plague of insects is the first chapter in the book of Joel. But no matter what is it, whatever it is, something is lingering around to consume up what you thought was unworthy. And that's where we something that we have to think about. Be careful what you throw away. Be careful whatever you thought that could not be taken away or consumed, killed, or eaten. Now that's my interpretation. It doesn't mean that what I'm saying is a final uh, definitive of what I believe is a reasonable answer to the first several verses of Joel chapter 1 but it's what I see it as it's what I have interpreted to become is a message for anyone out there uh, be careful what you throw away somebody else is going to make use of it. Verse 5. Awake ye drunkards and weep and howl all ye drinkers of wine because of the new wine for it is cut off from your mouth. So that means that the new wine you can't afford it or the new wine you won't you will not buy it because you've you've accustomed to the old and and there's something I wish I can remember the phrase is that a uh, 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 old wine and they're speaking about women I think they are is better than 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 new wine and in some kind of way I really don't know um how they're how they're phrasing it but i've i've heard a phrase but it, it's 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 dictated in a different way than how i just described so verse five awake ye drunkards and weep so alcoholics drunkards you should cry wake up wake up and weep and howl oh all ye drinkers of wine because of the new wine for it is cut off from your mouth because there's something new out there that you either can't afford or you do not deserve six for a nation has come up upon my land strong and without number whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. So a nation has come up upon my land, and this is the nation of Israel 
and a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. So in Revelation, the locusts and the teeth of a lion and the head and all that, and that's that's what, what this means. But the lion is symbolic of the lion of Judah. Okay, so let me just check something here. Because we're talking about Joel is the judgment, the God's judgment of man. I just see the son, the father. Petio, the word of the Lord that came to jo Joel's son, Pertho, father of the prophet Joel. So Joel is a prophet. So every every name or every parable that you read in the Bible, you're speaking of, you're reading about prophets and apostle apostles of God. They're apostles. The prophet Joel. Some have connected him with the father of Joel, Petiel. Joel exercised his office as prophet in Judah. There we are. So I was absolutely correct. The Lion of Judah. So Joel means Jehovah is God. That's what Joel means. Jehovah is God is quoted from the noted Bible. Arnold Clement Gabaline. Um, Jehovah is God. That's what Joel means. This name occurs frequently in the Old Testament. It occurs in 1 Samuel. It occurs in 1 Chronicles. And there's others. The prophet Joel was a son of Petiel. Numerous guesses have been made about his personality. A tradition states that he was from Betham in the tribe of Reuben. In Chronicles 1, 24 chapter 16 verse a man by name of Peth Pethion wait Pethahia is mentioned some have connected him with the father of Joel Pethel claiming upon this that Joel belonged to a priestly family but this as well as other claims cannot be confirmed Jewish expositors make the statement that Pethiel was Samuel because Samuel had a son by name of Joel. Now I just heard a thunder roll when I said that. But inasmuch as the sons of Samuel were evildoers, this is incorrect. The book itself does not give even a single hint as to his personal history. So Joel, when I said that... Um, it could, Samuel could have been Samuel had a son by the name of Joel I heard the thunder up there and that was what the Lion of Judah I've heard that before when I when I quoted from the Bible and reading from the Bible but you know we make things of what we want to believe them to be when and where Joel lived, as to the time and place. When and where he exercised his prophetic office, we are not left in doubt. He prophesied not like Hosea among the ten tribes, but he was a prophet of Judah. Okay? The Lion of Judah are those men that wear those hats with those long tassels hanging out, what they call them, like little. And they're the Lion's Club. The entire prophecy bears witness to it. This fact has never been disputed. It is different with the date of Joel. Destructive criticism has assigned to Joel a post-excellent date, meaning post-exile, with some very uh, pure arguments. Pure arguments. For instance, the claim that the mention of the walls of Jerusalem 
chapter 2, 7 through 9, point to a date after Ezra and Nehemiah. Such an argument is not an argument of a scholar, but of a schoolboy. Critics also object to an early date because the Greeks are mentioned in chapter 3, 6. But the Greeks are also mentioned in an inscription of Sargon about 710 BC before Christ. And along before that in the Armana letters, a Greek is also mentioned as stated in higher criticism and the monuments by Professor Sace. So these um, there's some mention that because Samuel had a son by the name of Joel, but as in, but in as much as the sons of Samuel were evil doers, this is incorrect. So um, it is one of the reasons why Joel mean it says Joel means Jehovah is God. It doesn't mean Jehovah God. It means Jehovah is God. It's just a um, it's a prophecy according to the topics by this author, the Noted Bible, that Joel means Jehovah is God. All right. So I'm not going to read too much. It's just a lot to read. Yes, there it is. The prophecy of Joel is one which extends from his own time to the time of Israel's restoration and blessing in the day of the Lord. The style, the style of the brief prophecy is sublime, subliminal. To show its beauty, we give a corrected metric version. It must be read through several times to grasp its vivid descriptions, the, the terse and solemn utterances, the full smooth phrases and above all the revelation it contains so it's poetic and and it, it comes with its sound it soars with the flight of imagination the originality beauty and variety of the simals and the conceptions are simple enough that's what the simals is but they are at the same time bold and grand the perfect order in which they are arranged the even flow the well compact structure of the prophecy are all remarkable so this is um, a parable that many, I guess, bishops and pastors, whosoever attempted to discuss Joel, might have in, misinterpreted Joel as being the son of Samuel and an evil doer. And that's what it says. In an annotated bibliography of Joel, a prophet, a, a, a prophet of a prophet of God, meaning that Joel means Jehovah is God. For a nation has come up upon my land; that nation is Israel strong and without number whose teeth are the teeth of a lion lion of judah and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion he hath laid my vine waste my vine waste is my wine that i discarded because now we're getting rid of the old and now we got the new wine that that the drunkard should weep and cry and desire after and cast it away so he have laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. Barked up my fig tree. Bark my fig tree. Bark is a bark is like a branch. Bark my fig tree. That sounds like a dog. He have laid my vine waste. Mean got rid of it. And barked up my fig tree. Bark fig tree. He had made it clean, bare. He had cleaned it up and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. And that's where I, I had mentioned up here that what, whatsoever you throw away, it, someone else may savage it and make it them own to be, to restore it and to bring it back to its, its normal self.
Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. So, lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. So this vine waist, the branches thereof are made white, and it's lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband. Just as if someone prepared a virgin for her husband of her youth as, as a young woman. Nine, the meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers mourn. So the meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord cut off from the priests, cut off from the Lord's ministers. And then it says mourn. So that means if you cut it off, that we are in mourning. The field is wasted, the land mourneth. Just as I said, for the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil languished. So it looked like we had the locusts destroyed everything. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen. How? Ow! Right? O ye vine dressers. Vine dressers are someone that prepare a vineyard with grapes. For the wheat and for the barley is what they use to make beer and drink and froth. It, it get frothy because the harvest of the field is perished because the locusts and the, and the canker worm and the pommel worm and, and all of them has just, they cleaned everything up. The vine is dried up and the fig tree languish. The pomegranate tree, you ever see this fruit? And I remember when I was growing up as a child, there were children around, or older children around, and it says, oh, you're not supposed to eat that. You'll die if you eat it. And when you break it open, it has like these little red seeds in there. And then it has like this white, kind of like yellowish looking vines that's connected to the seeds. And then you see them take that out. And then you see someone eating the bottom of it. But then I never ate a pomegranate in my life. But I've seen people eating them after they clean the little black seeds out. There's always some old wives fables that they're telling that you're not supposed to eat that. It's going to kill you. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. And that's what I remember hearing about a pomegranate tree. As I was a child growing up, I never I never touched it. I, w I didn't want to die after eating a pomegranate fruit. The vine is dried up. That's 12th verse. And the fig tree languish. The pomegranate tree. The palm tree also languish. The pomegranate tree languish. And the apple tree, even all the trees of the field language, are withered away. Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourselves like your girdle. You know, make yourself, bring yourself tight. Hold on to yourself. Gird, like hold on tight. And lament. Lament is to dress, dress up, make beautiful. Um, ye priests, howl, ye ministers of the altar. Come, lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God, for the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. So they're going through a time here the plague of the insects is symbolic of 
the prophetic word of Joel, which is which means Jehovah is God. Fourteen, sanctify ye a fast. Sanctify a fast, like do not eat anything. Go on a fast. Become sanctified. Go on a fast. Call a solemn assembly. A solemn assembly is like where everybody is very solemn and they're quiet and they're, they're serious. And it looked like somebody just had a funeral. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. So you are to just let it all out. Just let out all of your pain and your sorrow and just just you ever see people who need to cry and they refuse and they just they don't want to cry. Well just let it go. Because when you cry and when you get it all out, all of the sorrow and pain is out of your soul. Cry it out. Your eyes are your soul. Let it go. Cry. Let it all out. It doesn't matter if you're a man or woman. Just let it go. Breathe and start all over again. Because when you hold and build up all that and call yourself a man because you're holding, you're holding all that in. you got to let it out. You got to let it, let it out. Even if you got to go somewhere in a closet and cry in the dark. Or if you, you need to go in your car and cry. Let it out. Let it go. Because holding it in, it doesn't help you. You're, you, you're, you're burdening yourself with something that you should have healed from by now. You mustn't carry these burdens. Because you lay your burdens down. You know, if you don't want to give Jesus any more burdens because he has to win souls. But there's nothing that's going to... Jesus didn't let anybody worry him. He went up on... He was on a boat when it was a storm. Before they caught all these fish sleeping down up in the bottom of a deck or something. And everybody was hollering and screaming. And Jesus was was sleeping like you know what's wrong with you you know my god my father is going to take care of us he's going to get us to a calm seat and so this what i understand the plague of the insects mean that there was a curse and the locusts came and withered away everything it was nothing left behind whatever was left behind something else came and ate it and then something came and ate it. And then something came and ate it. And to a little butterfly, I guess. Because a caterpillar is, is, is the last thing that it says here. That came to eat away the canker worm. And a canker worm. Those are some nasty uh, 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 insects. Because if you just happen to eat a, eat a piece of fruit with a canker worm in it. They're going to go. They're going to embed into your skin. And you're gonna itch, and then you're gonna break out into pustules, and you're gonna you're gonna have some kind of canker sores on you. They look like ringworms, <clears throat> and this is where many children that grew up in grow up in the rural areas and poor areas end up eating oranges and fruits that has um, uh, their embedded canker worms are in it, and that's why the city is supposed to come and treat these trees with canker because it makes you you grow you get something on your mouth like a a sore that's a canker and 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 a canker sore is always interpreted as, of being uh, a herpes virus something that has to do with herpes and then they put treatment on it some people get a wart but these are or they come from canker worms and as it says right here, canker worms and locusts and all these things, you know, they they're, uh, ate each other up. And the last thing to, to eat something was a caterpillar. The canker worm had left half the caterpillar eaten. 
Now I'm going to look it up because I know a caterpillar is a butterfly. Let me just caterpillar. Is a caterpillar a butterfly? Yes, it does. It changes into a butterfly. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. That's, that's, that's what has taken place. Is a metamorphosis has taken place. A metamorphosis has taken place when a caterpillar goes through a stage of, you know, different stages until it becomes a butterfly and then it's, it's stuck into a, a tree branch and then a butterfly comes out a beautiful butterfly that's yellow and gold it looks like a tiger like a tiger color butterfly there's so many beautiful butterflies out there so if if you are plagued with I don't want to say diseases but if if you, if, if a city is, has been stricken with a plague and, and everything is withered away, that means that you need to go and stay someplace else and just forget about what, everything that you lost and just cry. Because it says in the last verse 14, sanctify ye a fast. So you need to fight fast because you don't have any food, any drink anything nothing the meat is gone as i said the vine is dried up and the fig tree language the pomegranate tree you can the palm tree the apple tree even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men that means that there's nothing left the meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the lord the priests cut off the, the, the Lord's ministers and everybody is mourning because there are, there's a plague. There's not anything left for anyone to consume, to, to have joy, to give blessings to the, the, the house of the Lord. Everything is gone. So it requests that when, you, when you're like that, to sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders, and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. So what that means is that is if something um, happened, a storm or a, what what that is, is when we gather all the elders, we take all these people who are not able to fend for themselves during trial times like this and we put them, you gather them all together, you take them to a safe haven and you cry unto the Lord and you pray and you fast because you don't have anything to eat, anything to drink. So there's no sense hollering and screaming about, oh, did, we didn't have anything to eat and drink in three and five, three to five days. Because there's nothing to eat and drink. Everything has withered away. There was a plague of incense. And that is the first chapter of Joel. The second chapter, I'm going to, I don't know, some, tonight I really don't feel up to recording this an hour but let me get through I'm going to try to get through the first page because this song Joel is very short it has three chapters it's very short I, I doubt if it has It's about probably 65 verses all together in the three chapters. But I'll complete it on, t on tomorrow. Where is today? Today, later on today. It's 2.02 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The plague of incense is a type of the day of the Lord. So the plague of incense is a type of the day of the Lord because when the Lord comes, becomes the second coming, it's going to be a terrible day. There will not be any sanctification jumping up and down and thank you Jesus and everybody is going to have glory no it's going to be a terrible day and let me find that verse I 
Again, I'm not an ordained minister, so please do not criticize me. I'm doing my best. Okay, so Joel, the meaning of Joel is Jehovah is God. The day of the Lord is a biblical term and theme used in both the Hebrew Bible, Old Testament, before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. See? So the great and the great and terrible day of the Lord. Uh, Malachi 4, chapter 5, verse. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. Very Elijah the same that lived in the days of I will send you Elijah, Malachi 4, 5. So the day of the Lord, there's there will not be any barbecue and fried chicken and we got liquor over here and beer and a joint over there. No, you're not going to celebrate like that. Because that's what people are doing on the 4th of July, which is a civil war. When, when there was hell raising going on and people died that day. We are celebrating and barbecuing and everything on a day where we should be in mourning. <clears throat> and that's what it says right here. That you should be in mourning. Because that's a terrible day. The day of the Lord is a terrible day. It is not a day of joy and everybody happy and crying and smiling. Because the Lord doesn't want you to come up in his face trying to act like you like him when you've been worshiping the devil all this long time. And bothering with his children. You know, bothering with the Lord's children. His children. The Lord's children. You've been worshiping the devil and bothering with the Lord's children. Now you're the Lord, now you're his 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 friend, you're smiling because you want to make it to heaven. And you're around here trying to behave as if you're on top of the world and harassing people. But now when the Lord comes, you think he didn't know all of these things, you were festivities you you've held with with hell raising and all sorts of friends that you gather together in large groups against one person, and you press on and you're trying to make drive them crazy to kill themselves. To believe that there nobody loved them, but but everybody loved you and you're hateful. The day of the Lord is going to be a terrible end. It's not going to be a day of joy and laughter. That comes after all of the changes and 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 everybody is dead and burning for you're going to burn forever. You're not going to see a moment in your life will not be happiness. So you might as well be happy now. Because if you don't make it to heaven, not one moment of your life, every moment of your life that you're trying to bring on me with blasts on the tape recorder because you're evil, mean, and wicked behind, are angry, and I didn't turn out to be a nasty, crackhead whore on the side of the street. Because most of the people nowadays believe that being a crackhead is going to get you a place to stay. And it's a shame that we can't convince these people once they flipped over, that you can flip back over and come back to the, to the way you had been, which were better than you than you are now. Why you want to look like that? Why you want to take it out on me? Because I didn't join in your group and turn out to be like you with all kind of uh, 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 marks and stuff all over your arms or you done skin pop. And they take something like a needle and they skin pop. And have all them old marks all over them with their skin pop. And they use up all the veins in the arms shooting up heroin until now they're going in the veins in the neck. Try to find a vein in the, in, in the neck right back here. Okay, that's what they get you right here. Right there. That's how they, that's how they kill you. Okay? I know every part of your body. So when you come here and try to bother with me, I know just where to get you. I can get you here, and there's another place back here I can get you. Just by taking my, my finger, I can, get, I can get you right here. Right here around your neck. Okay? And when they want to cut your throat, they get your throat around the jugular vein. It's right here. It's, it's where they get you to cut your throat. And when they cut you, you, you just faint. You don't feel anything. So don't feel sorry because they don't feel anything. 
When it cuts your head off, you don't feel anything. You feel a cut, but you faint. You, you, you're fainting. You're not going to be hollering and screaming like, like an animal for hours. So what we're doing here, what I'm, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to interpret, is to let you know that there's people out there. And they're very hateful and they don't, and they're angry because they destroyed their own lives. And they see you a face from years ago when you were a little girl that they hated you back then and they hate you now. And look at her; she thinks she's better than everybody. So now they want to take out all these transgressions upon you and make noise and talk trash every moment of the day of the hour and, and want me to think that they are thy father in heaven that's a false prophet out there people that's making noise talking about Velma Bland, Velma Bland, Velma Bland that's a false prophet that's a false prophet out there that's a false prophet because that's what we're going to get is a false prophet is going to come through here and pretend that he is the new, the second coming of Jesus. And he is not. He is not a part of. He, he's trying to win souls, as many souls as possible to come over here. And then when the real Messiah come, you over there, you've already done sold your soul to the devil that you thought was a prophet that's making counterfeit money or whatever he's doing to get you around and it must be doing something to make you follow him. It's got to be giving you something because people do not follow anyone unless they're getting something free. They don't follow anyone unless they're getting something free. The plague of incense, a type of the a type of the day of the Lord is a plague of incense. Everything is going to be wiped away. Verse 15, Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Is not the meat cut off before your eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. So let me read this over. It's verse 15 through 20, chapter 1. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yeah, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is rotten under their clots. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. So the seed is rotten under their claws meaning that under the claws of the seed seed is rotten under the clod the garners are laid desolate garners garners is like um i don't know if they're talking about the garner belt you know those little garners that these women pull up up their legs to hold the stockings up the garner the garners are laid desolate, meaning that, that they're laid there, they're on the ground, I guess, somewhere desolate. The garners are laid desolate, meaning that when you're desolate, meaning that you're, there's no more return. That it's just old and withered and it's dried up and it's just desolate. The barns are broken down. The barns where the cattle were are broken down. For the corn is withered. So if the corn, there's nothing. It's just, it's a terrible day. 18. How do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed, confused. They're like, don't, doesn't know what's going on. Because they have no pasture. Yay. The flocks of sheep are made desolate. O oh Lord, to thee will I cry. Now we're going to cry out to the Lord. For the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. Now are you going to stay 
in this place and it's like that, it, it, sooner or later you'll be succumbed, succumbed from the from from the diseases that that lie be with in in the future. You know, if you stay there, you are sooner or later gonna will die and be succumbed from desolation of the land. You know, there's nothing there, so you end up with all these diseases. Twenty, the beasts of the field cry also unto thee. The beasts, like you hear of the beasts of the field out there crying and howling for the rivers of waters are dried up and the fire have devoured the pastures of the wilderness. So the the prophet, uh, Joel the prophet was a witness to all of these, all of this happening. He was a witness to, to this happened in Israel. He was a witness to all this. The day of the Lord invaders from the north. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, Mount Zion. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. When you hear that alarm, that means that all the people come a running and they're told to, to run when they, when they hear that alarm to meet at a particular place. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain that all the inhabitants, all the people of the land tremble. You know, they're like, I mean, now you, you, you're you scared. You hear the alarm. Oh, right? It's trouble coming. For the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh, nigh at hand. It's now. Two, a day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there have not been ever the like, neither should be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So no matter if you're good or bad, no matter if you're a great po politician or a rich person up on the top of the hill, or no matter if you're poor, living in destitute urban settings, Everybody going to suffer the same end. They're going to have the same suffering. Because neither shall be any more after it. Even to the years of many generations. Even to the years of many generations. People will not be the same. Again, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, okay, a great people and a strong people, there have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. You will never have people like that ever again. Three, a fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yeah, and nothing shall escape them. Okay, so meaning that you will never get, a, you won't get away from it. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen so shall they run. So, as I said in the earlier uh, caption of this video, that I recognize these locusts as being the locusts that's supposed to sting as scorpions with the snake heads, um, their tails of the horse, horsemen, which are chariots, with these horse with lion heads, and their mouth is really huge as lions. Well, there it is. It's showing up in Joel that the appearance of them, that no one will get away from them, is as the appearance of horses 
And as horsemen, so shall they run. Five, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces should gather blackness. You're going to turn black. Your face is going to gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Verse 8, neither shall one thrust another, they shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded, because see, you will not die. So these horsemen, even when they fall on their sword, no one will be able to kill them. No one will be able to get away from them. Verse 9, they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. 10, the earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The stars will not have a beam anymore. 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he, the Lord's camp is very great. I the Lord, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, because we have a holy war here. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Who should stand it? Who should stand it? Who should be able to deal with that? Cope with it? Twelve. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. You mean that do not eat a thing. All I want you to do is to fast. Turn ye, turn ye even to me. Even mean that not wicked. Be evenly yoked to me. With all your heart, sincerity, do not fake. And with fasting, you can't eat, you can't drink. And with weeping, you're gonna, you, 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 you will cry. Okay? You're going to cry. And with mourning, we're not talking about crocodile tears. And with mourning. 13. And rend your heart. Render your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. So what we have here is we got the devil that's trying to come into the way of your minds to make you talk blaspheme against that Lord God in heaven and, and you have to grab yourself and just say I plead the blood of Jesus Satan get behind me get behind that person who's following me get behind that person who's following me is following him and just keep getting behind because you are not going to get in front of me. You got to come through me. I'm not going to let you through me. You need to go through what I've gone through and you need to know that I'm not going to make an easy pathway for anybody. Not anymore. No, not I.
Okay, so you're going to render your heart. You're not going to give your garments. You're not going to render your garments, meaning that you're not going to take your clothes off and try to sell your body. And you're going to turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Okay? Because our Lord God is telling us that you need to go to his son Jesus. Don't come to me. I don't want to hear it. 14. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? Okay. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him? Even a meat offering and a drink offering to the Lord your God. No one knows that, but God should know that. 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. So you get you better blow the trumpet in Zion and sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, because you better not eat a thing. Now let me see Mount Zion. I think that's in Israel too. Mount Zion. These people are making so much problems in Ferguson, Mount Zion. Excuse me. Um, I'm just gonna put profit. I'm sure. Four blood moons and a prophet jewel. Four blood moons in 2014 and 15. In the case of Day of Judgment, NASA. The Prophet Joel indicates Day of Judgment upon nations. Day of Judgment upon nations and redemption of Israel and God's temple are behind the door. So four blood moons in 2014 and 2015. I have something with NASA. I'm going to post it. Such heavenly phenomena have occurred only three other times in recent centuries, and each time they were linked to significant and major events concerning the Jewish people, including the ingathering of the people of Israel and the, the newborn state all in our modern era. A tetrad of lunar eclipses occurred in the years 1493 and 1494 when the Jews were expelled from Spain. It happened again in the same way in the years of 1949 and 1950 after David Ben-Gurion issued the Declaration of Independence for the newborn state of Israel, giving the Jewish people a homeland after 2,000 years of exile. The lunar tetrad appeared again in the years 1967 and 68 when Israel won the Six-Day War and regained the city of Jerusalem the eternal capital of the Jewish people since the kings of da since the days of King David. It is definitely not an accident that all of these unusual heavenly phenomena have occurred at significant times in the history of the Jewish people and that a lunar tetrad will occur again in 2014 and 2015 on specific holidays on the Jewish calendar. We have to ask ourselves, what is the meaning of these extraordinary heavenly spectacles that coincide with important major events concerning the Jewish people and even the newborn state of, the, of Israel? Um, I found that on templemountfaithful.org, Temple Mount and Land of Israel Faithful Movement. And it mentions the time period that these tetrad lunar eclipses occurred. So lunar eclipses, there are to be four lunar moons before the coming of the Lord, before the day of judgment. And so we've already we all we've already had one, two, three lunar moons. So we're expecting to have our fourth lunar moon, 2014. Through 2015 and I think we did have one lunar moon around Yom Kippur I think I'm not sure sometime in September as I recall 
that the media had asked, you know, they always say if you want to see the lunar moon, that the moon passes between earth and sun. That's what it is. So there is one more next year, and it's supposed to be the day of judgment. Not for Velma Bland, so don't try to pull all your weight on me because I'm not the Messiah. I'm not Jesus Christ. Get that foolishness out of here. Because you're not having a judgment day on me. You're not worth it to judge me. Because you're nothing but Satan, a nasty whore that sit up on top of the mountain that Jesus Christ talks about and that all of the prophets talk, speaks about in this Bible is a nasty whore Jezebel is going to have all these little snakes upon her head and I'm not her. Okay, so your Jezebel is a nasty whore that's fooling all these people to follow her and she's picking on me and I'm not the one to pick on I'm not your Jezebel I'm not your Jesus I'm not your Christ I'm not your Messiah I'm Velma Bland and I am not going to allow anyone to try to make me look like I'm the stupid fool and they're the ones that need to, to correct their lives Okay, so find your Jezebel, because it's definitely not me. The whore that's out there trying to steal my identity and telling these men, and she knows that she has the HIV virus and AIDS out there sleeping around in strip clubs with men. And when she introduces herself, she introduces herself as Velma Bland. No, let's take a look at me. I have a mole over here on my eye. I have moles in front of my face. Okay. I have a mole here that you can bear. There's a mole on my eye. Okay. I have a tattoo on my right leg with my name Vail. My hair is afro now. It's curly, soft hair. Okay. And I have, um, sometimes I have facial hair. I have a round face and red skin. And this woman is not me. She could never be me. I'm a doctor fellow and I just started to get into the Bible because... I never really had time to get into the Bible. Um, I, I didn't, like I said in other videos, I didn't really understand it and my mind wasn't focused. And I would say that for, for those of you who are pushing your children, you better get baptized and all this. So don't, do not do your kids that. Let them sit up in Bible study and they will eventually grow into knowing the Lord. But tell them about the Lord and t put them in Bible study and have them take notes. Do not teach your kids about the Lord to make it seem like it's a restriction. It's a wonderful knowledge is the Bible. It's once you get to know it, it's, I think some parts of the Bible are very funny. It's not funny as in joking, but it's like the, the, the different episodic stages of event that took that has taken place with the apostles as we go through all of the different apostles, starting from Genesis all the way through to Matthew, which is the New Testament, and then we go on into the um, the, the last uh, 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 chapter, which is Revelations. Okay. So the great whore has risen, and she's fighting with me. She's fighting with the wrong person because I'm not going to give in. You would never get me in your devil worshiping group. It's not going to happen. So you can cry. And you can scream. You can holler. You can try to fool everybody. But you're definitely you're not Velma Bland. You need to have all of, the, all of my, my valuable interbeing. Because you can't be me. You'll never be me. I'm not a whore. I don't sleep around with everybody's husbands in the neighborhood. And I'm not a stripper on the pole. And I don't smell like a dead skunk. And I don't practice voodoo with killing cats and throwing them in raccoons in the front of the yard. And, and coming around and burying uh, uh, carcasses of fowl in, in the backyard and all that. that that's, that's, that that's not my doing. Um, this woman could never be me. She could never be me. She's a trainee and she's supposed to, have be, supposed to be a man and a woman. And there's a lot of rumors going around here that I'm her and I got AIDS. It's a lie. Because I'm not that, I'm not that dirty woman. She's, she's a dirty woman. She's a beast. 
And God is going to take her out if she doesn't leave me alone. And I've already warned her. And I know she's watching me. Got your little spy cams. Come in my house. Whatever you're doing. But when you come in my house. Do not let me fool you. With this Bible in my hand. Do not get. Do not be a fool. And come in here and try to attack me. Because I'm not going to cry and hide in the closet. With my Bible. Oh no I'm not. Because right now I'm in the flesh and blood. And I'm not going to let anyone come in my house and take my life. Because she's a nasty, dirty whore. Okay, so as we go through the day of the Lord, invaders from the north. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather into blackness. And you're going to see my face is black on Facebook. And, you, and then you might understand why. Because when the devil comes, you don't want the devil to see you. But you want to see the devil so you can overthrow the devil. Because I have authority over the devil. You better believe it. The devil doesn't have authority over me. Verse 12, therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me, say, even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. And render your heart and not your garments. Don't prostitute. Don't sell yourself. Don't take your clothes off in front of me. So I don't see it. And turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger. And of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. Repent of your evil. 14. Who knoweth if he will return and repent. And leave a blessing behind him. Even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Who know. Who is to say that Lord, the Lord is going to come back here. The second coming he's going to be. As good as. We predict him to be. He's not. It's going to be a terrible day. It's going to be a holy war. And we already have a nation already right now. Has been for years saying that they are fighting for the land that they live. The ISIS and ISIL. They call it a holy war. We're not talking about the ISIS and the ISIL right now. We're talking about those horsemen. Who knows if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts, means your infants. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let them go ahead. Don't bother with them. Let them marry if they want to marry. Stop trying to stop trying to keep people unhappy around here. You have no right to do that. Let them marry if they're in love. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. If that's what he needs to do. Because he see that he's a failing congregation here. Everybody is full of wicked evil devilment and they're faking in church and let them say spare thy people O Lord and give not thine heritage to, to reproach do not let anybody come and, and run you out of your house okay give not thine heritage to reproach a reproachment is when someone come and, and, and they are condescending they are bullies and they are murderers and they will take your property, your bank accounts, and your life. That's what God is saying here. That the heathen should rule over them. Right? So the heathen, do not give thy inheritance to reproach. That the heathen should rule over them. And we know who our heathens are. They've been trying to steal Vilma's condo for quite some time now. And they're going to die trying. 
Wherefore should they say among the people, where is thy God? Because they don't know God. They wouldn't know God if God came and kissed them on the cheek. They wouldn't know God. Let me read that again. That's verse 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people. Because your priest is going to have to pray for you because you're so stupid you won't pray for yourself. Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy inheritance to reproach. That the heathen should rule over them. Which is what? The whore. Wherefore should they say among the people. The whore are going to rule over them so bad. Until they are going to ask, ask where is their God. They are not going to know what God is. It's a shame. But it's happening right now. So I'm going to stop right there. Call out to Jesus. Do not call out the Velma Bland because I'm not your friend. I'm not your friend. Because the reason I say that because nowadays people are, are very trifling and they are heathens and they're trying to steal my condo, trying to steal my life, my doctorate degree. They don't even want me to move forth to, to even to take care of myself so I can go out and help people that need me. Everything that's laid out before me that when I come up to the water, everybody want to let the water out. When I come up to the lake, they want to let out the let out the water, and because Velma's here, because they know Velma, she is not gonna go with that devilment that they're doing, and she's not gonna follow a whore. So I'm fighting a whore right now. And she's gonna lose. Thank you very much for listening to me outside. All you dopes that think I'm a dope. You're listening to me outside free. They're on Skype. They're on spy cams. Because they're too stupid. They don't want to come and click on my YouTube. Because they're scared I'm going to get rich. And I'm going to be on TV. But they'll go to someone that's not going to explain to them. The Bible the way I'm explaining it. And give them 10,000 views on YouTube. But they only have 5 views and 2 views. And it's usually the views from myself. When I go in and, and check and edit it. And I get a view. But that's okay. Because God said, if you don't hear and if you don't listen, you would never make it to heaven. Thank you very much, oh dear Lord God, for helping me and my soul. Because I don't need the whore and I don't need the pimp to survive. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good night. Fill my blank.